what's up? This is going to be a fast, fun, to the point lecture on acute coronary syndrome. We're gonna talk about what acute coronary syndrome is, what encompasses acute coronary syndrome, and the major differences within the realm of ACS. Acute coronary syndrome is sudden reduced blood flow to the heart. You have a patient that has some type of ischemic in nature, something that's causing a decreased blood flow to the heart, but you don't know what it is. So think of acute coronary syndrome as the roof. And within the roof there is, an, of the house, within this house is family members. Now there are different family members. We have Sam the dad, Sam the STEMI, Nancy the mother, which is the non-STEMI, and Ursula, unstable angina, which is the baby. Now, Sam the STEMI has ST segment elevation. This is what we'll talk about here in just a second. Nancy is a non-ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. And Ursula is unstable angina. Now, Sam is going to have, on his EKG, you're going to see ST segment elevation. And Nancy, there's going to be no ST segment elevation on the, M, uh, on the EKG, but she's still having decreased blood flow to the heart. And Ursula, she's having a lot of chest pain still that's new, that's worsening, but her cardiac enzymes are negative and her EKG doesn't show any ST segment elevation. Let's start with Ursula, the baby, unstable angina. Remember that acute coronary syndrome is reduced blood flow to the heart, causing these patients to have symptoms, right? So Ursula, she's gonna come in and she's gonna say, she could say something like, hey, my chest pain is just gonna be getting worse over the past couple of days, and now that I'm sitting down, I'm not, not doing anything, my chest pain just comes on. It used to be just when I would be walking or do something serious, but now it's just when I'm sitting down watching TV. There is decreased blood flow there, but if you look, let me just put my, put my pointer up. But if you look, she still has blood flow. So she can still, she still has decreased blood flow, but she still has some room to go. Versus Nancy, there's even less blood flow here. Nancy, the non-STEMI, there's decreased blood flow to the point that it's going to cause positive cardiac enzymes. So cardiac enzymes are going to be released. Now, Sam, the non-STEMI, there is complete occlusion. No blood flow can get to that point. And it's going to cause such a low, no blood flow to the point where ST segment elevations are going to be shown on an EKG. Now, Sam will also have positive cardiac enzymes, but we're not waiting on those positive cardiac enzymes to do something about STEM. STEM is definitely, 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 definitely an emergency that we want to do something about urgently. Nine STEMI, Nancy, and unstable angina are emergencies too, but this guy, he needs to be treated right now. We have to do something right now about this because his artery is occluded, and the more arteries occluded, there's no blood flow there, and the more time we sit on that, the more heart muscle is going to. ST segment elevation, what am I talking about? What does that even mean? So you see here this, this is ST segment elevation right there st segment elevation st segment elevation st segment elevation st segment elevation this is huge and you don't want to miss this because if a patient comes in with this the patient is having a STEMI. are you going to wait for the cardiac enzymes to come back on a patient with a STEMI? heck no this is an emergency this patient we need to do something right now yes we can draw blood yes we can treat this patient but we have to do something right now and we're not going to wait on those cardiac markers to come back because we know this is an emergency by the ST segment elevation. What do we do as far as treatment, acute coronary syndrome? Remember, this is the house, this is the roof, acute coronary syndrome, it means decreased blood flow to the heart. STEMI, what is the difference between a STEMI, 
Nancy the non-STEMI and unstable angina. What is the difference? Well, the major difference with a STEMI is these patients can get thrombolytics like TPA, clot blusters. They, they can get thrombolytics. Non-STEMI, Nancy the non-STEMI, she can't get thrombolytics. And the baby, unstable angina, can't get thrombolytics. Who can get thrombolytics? STEMIs can get thrombolytics. Who can get thrombolytics? ST segment elevation myocardial infarctions can get thrombolytics, whereas non-STEMIs cannot and unstable angina cannot. What is also the major difference? Urgent cardiac cath for these patients. These patients need to go back to the cath lab within 90 minutes or less if possible. So if you have a patient come in with a heart attack, our goal is to get them back to cath lab. Why? Because cath lab is way better than giving these patients thrombolytics. What they'll do is they'll inject a catheter with a balloon on the end through an artery, either the radial artery or the femoral artery. And what they'll do is they'll slide that catheter to right up to that point of occlusion they'll take that balloon and they'll balloon that occlusion open they'll take the balloon and push essentially all that plaque to the sides of the walls okay and that's what we need and this is so much better than thrombolytics in these patients because there's a decrease in reclotting and there's a less of risk of bleeding so this is more accurate. You can get more done with the cardiac cath, but if you can't get to the cardiac cath, uh, for some reason, let's say you're out in the boondocks where there's no medicine or no cardiac cath available, then absolutely these patients need to get thrombolytics if indicated. Now remember, thrombolytics, you can't get thrombolytics in all the patients, so you want to re review them. If they've had a recent um, head bleed, if you give them thrombolytics, they're going to bleed in their, they could bleed in their brain even more. You could kill them, so why do that? Now, so those are the differences. So urgent cardiac cath within 90 minutes and thrombolytics, 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 thrombolytics is the difference. Non STEMI positive cardiac enzymes. They'll have parts, a STEMI will have positive cardiac enzymes too, but we're not waiting on those cardiac enzymes to come back, right? Because we know they have ST segment elevation. Whereas here, their non STEMI is a non ST segment elevation. So they're going to have positive cardiac enzymes, reduce blood flow enough to the heart to reduce, to, to produce positive cardiac enzymes but non st segment elevation that is the difference what about unstable angina unstable angina they have reduced blood flow to the heart but they're not producing positive cardiac enzymes and they have no st segment elevation now you want to be careful in these patients because these patients with unstable angina can convert way over here to st segment elevation or non-STEMI so it's important to do uh, routine cardiac enzymes you want to do serial cardiac enzymes and you also want to monitor these patients for worsening chest pain unrelieved chest pain things like that because something is going on and we need to monitor them so always putting all these patients on a monitor is good because they could go into arrhythmias in their heart and they could die that way and we don't want them to die all right they can go into VTAC VFib really soon I go down to the ER all the time and patients come in with non us uh, or come in with STEMI and then they they all of a sudden their eyes roll back they become unresponsive and they go into VTAC or sometimes they'll be awake and looking at me and talking and then they'll go into VTAC and that freaks me out because I want to shock them but they're awake and they have a pulse so you want to um, you want to definitely make sure they're on a monitor. You want to definitely get cardiac enzymes for all three. You want to definitely do EKGs. But with the non uh, with the STEMI, you're not waiting on those cardiac enzymes to come back. You already know that they have because they have ST segment elevation. They are having a heart attack, and you need to do something about it immediately. With a STEMI and non-STEMI and unstable angina, we talked about um, the differences, but what about cardiac cath? Do these patients go for cardiac cath? Do we even inject, inject um, radiopac dye to see if these patients are having an occlusion? 
Absolutely. These patients will go back, but it's not, it doesn't have to be within 90 minutes. If these patients are somewhat stable, they can wait. They can, um, the goal is to take them within 72 hours. They don't need to go back within 90 minutes like a STEMI. So within 72 hours is okay. But the thing is they don't get thrombolytics, whereas STEMIs get thrombolytics. They'll all get beta blockers. They'll all get aspirin. They can all get nitrates. Beta blockers and aspirin, these help decrease mortality. Um, Non-STEMI patients can also get Plavix if um, they're candidates for it. They can get nitrates, unfractionated heparin or Lovenox in non-STEMI and unstable angina because we don't want them to clot out. So this is kind of what differentiates unfractionated heparin and Lovenox or Lovenox and unstable angina in um, non-STEMI versus here a non a STEMI they don't they don't need that because they're going back for cath and they're going to get uh clot busters whereas here there we want to stop them from occluding off and a STEMI it's already occluded off so um those are the difference with a non-STEMI and a an unstable angina the treatment is essentially the same so as far as medical treatment if you can remember a non-STEMI the treatment then you can remember unstable angina the medical treatment as well they're they're all going to get cardiac cast they're all going to get aspirin they're all going to get um, beta blockers so and they can all get nitrates as well um, but the difference is um with non-STEMI and um, unstable angina the treatment is essentially the same Okay, so that encompasses acute coronary syndrome. We've talked about what acute coronary syndrome is. We've talked about STEMI. We've talked about non-STEMI, unstable angina, the differences in them, and the differences in management. Hope this helps.